Hey there, guys. I'm Sonic Ghost. Hey, guys. I'm Attorney Neek. And I'm Matt from Matt's LP Adventures. And welcome to a cult classic on the Nintendo 64 being played off the Wii. Does that make sense? <laughs> Legend of Zelda a cult classic? Nah. It's not. Especially not this game that got 10 out of 10s for a while. Hey, wait a minute. I was, pro I was promised Majora's Mask. This isn't Majora's Mask. Oh, but this is the prequel to Majora's Mask, don't you know? But don't you know well, that I'm this, out. But Majora's Mask is a port of this game? Oh man, you got me there. So, that's something I didn't know, but yes, this is the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Critically acclaimed back in 1998 as being a really revolutionary game for 3D games. This introduced Z-targeting. It pretty much just helped the entire series out. Because it really helps with just fine-tuning your camera and locking it behind you. A lot of games use it since this game. I mean, a lot of modern games do too. My yeah. prime example I bring up is Dark Souls. Dark Souls uses the same exact uh, system. Oh yeah. A lot of games took nods from both Super Mario 64 and then Ocarina of Time. So this game has definitely left a mark. Yeah, it's a lot of people's favorite childhood game too. Fairy boy, please, please kill me. Well, this is some foreshadowing. Hmm, I wonder who's asking me to do that. So yeah, our final name for this playthrough is Fairy Boy. Simply because there's a lot of characters in Ocarina of Time that call you Fairy Boy, so it's actually very fitting. I'm actually crying I'm now. A, I'm actually curious why you named that file Kill Me earlier. It's foreshadowing, don't you know? So, to get some technical information out of the way... There's a lot of different ways to play this game because when this game was first released on the N64, it had three different printings. There was original 1.0, which everyone's known as like the gold cartridge of the game, which had a lot of bugs on it. And then 1.1 was released a little bit later, which was a gray cart. It fixed a lot of the issues with the game, but at the same time, it still had some other things like the chanting of Fire Temple and the blood. 1.2, which was like GameCube, and we onwards basically removed a lot of that stuff. Removed the chanting, removed the blood, and starting in GameCube onwards, they changed the Crescent Moon symbol as well. We're playing a 1.0 version of this game. We're playing original Ocarina of Time. That was released back in 1998. Because we OG, son! The only weird thing about it is, as you can tell, if this was original Ocarina of Time, it looks pretty crisp. Because I'm playing it off a of Wii, just because it looks a little bit better for recording. So, but there you how go. are you doing that? Thank you, homebrew scene. That's how. Oh. If you want to know more about it, you just look up Ocarina Time 1.0 Wii and you find information online. That's how I found out about this. To be fair, there's nothing wrong with the later prints of this game. It's just that a lot of people really like the chanting of Fire Temple, for example. Adds to the music. And then same for that Crescent Moon symbol and everything. It kind of Changed to a symbol that was a little weirder. Didn't fit as well. I don't mind it as much, but I kind of grew up on it. Tradi traditionalists. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I've still got the vanilla version of Hyrule Warriors, and I play it today. I mean, I have it too. I mean, even though I don't really touch it much because of all the DLC I have on the Switch version. Yeah. I still got it. I've still yeah, maybe boot up once in a while. It? Okay, you played it. I lied. You played the Switch version. <laughs> Hi, Kokiri Vor Village. Yeah, hey, what I are you doing to that rock? Like he's, he's going really to town of that rock there. Yeah, uh, the Kokiri are weird people, I guess. Yeah, because they never grow up. Yeah, that's the truth. We learned that later in the story, but the Kokiri are all just perpetual kids. And that's why they're not allowed to leave this forest, because you'll find out later as well, the Decker Tree doesn't want anyone to leave the forest, and it's basically for the protection. Or the fact that Miyamoto took inspiration... From Peter Pan. From Peter Pan. Yeah. I mean, hence, that's why Link is dressed <laughs> up basically like Peter Pan. That's why he's called Fairy Boy. To be honest, I thought the the name was going to be a lot worse. Yeah. I, thought, I, I literally thought it was good. When you said, like, oh... <laughs> you you thought I was going to pick the Kill Me file, didn't you? I thought you guys were going to... <laughs> to get the kill me file. I was like, oh my gosh. 
kill me. That uh, just reminds me of that one picture I uh, you sent of the peach thing I sent you. Oh you god, know, like, yeah. Please kill me. <laughs> I mean, that peach doll basically had a kill me face. So you still got it. Though. Yeah, it's sitting behind me on the couch. <laughs> Why do you keep it there? Then? It's gonna kill him one day. One day I'll just wake up and that thing be holding a knife. Where'd you get this? <laughs> Hi, sorry. Ah. Uh. Sorry, yeah. Uh, sorry. I don't know this game as well as everybody else because I haven't played it yet. I, I know. <laughs> and then Lester's like, nope. No, I no, was just like, no. Hi, sorry. Bye, sorry. I will talk to you later. If you talk to her now, all she tells you is, hey, you got a fairy. That's neat. Go talk to the great deck tree. So this is a speed run, right? Oh, yep. We're, we're going to be in like 20 minutes. Actually, no, this is a 100% run, so it's under four hours. That's, cow, that's why less this this LP is part in 39 parts, right? To be fair, of <laughs> all my 100% playthroughs of this game, I made this one like very streamlined, which really did help. Yeah. It also helped that I was technically playing on the 1.0 version, so some things were easier to do as well. And we'll be getting more into that as the game unfolds. You got the cookery sword. Yeah, now I got my giant staff. Like, this thing is, like, basically a butter knife. Hey, it's a giant poke me stick. Yeah. <laughs> it's your beginning sword. It's really only good for a child. And it makes sense because this whole village is filled with chi uh, children. So, I'm not going to have anything that big. Oh, man, that's how you can also tell this is 1.0. There's random, like, little things you'll notice if you play this game over the years. If you're playing an original version, that was one of them. Link doesn't have an animation putting the sword back in his holster in 1.0. If you crawl in the crawl space, it just kind of teleports. <laughs> There's a lot of little nuances like this I've noticed over the years. It's, it's weird. It's like it's one of my most favorite games. Yeah, you gotta get rupees to enter the uh, shop to buy yeah. the shield with. Okay. At this point, if you go to the Great Decker Tree, you talk to a guy named Mido, and he's gonna stop you because you don't have a sword and shield. So I need to get 40 rupees What's into the shield. Also, I don't feel Master! like walking. I can defy physics. <laughs> and jump on a bridge. You having fun with that rock? Why are we screaming? We, we expect this. Okay? Yeah, we can expect this from him. Man, he's really going to town on that rock. Man, Man. I, maybe in editing, I should just put a giant black bar over him. <laughs> oh, he just pined to pick it up. In a weird way. Yeah. I guess you could say he's really. You cut my nose. God, start it. <laughs> she doesn't want me to say my punchline. That's the one I'm advantage just... of having two people in the same room. We can mute the other one. Physically. <laughs> I was gonna say, I guess you could say he's really. Amber, <laughs> get your hand over. No, no. I'm just never gonna get the punchline. I forbid it. No puns in this LP. I was gonna say you could say he's really hard. That's what I was gonna say. Man. Look, even he's trying to stop you now. <laughs> if you want to see the you great should... Deku tree, don't Lester, be sick. Lester, please. You should be like putting a picture over. Like, you can just put a picture, uh, my picture over Elmo's face and that Jack Black meme. Just have, have the stop sign pointing to it and have, an El have an, my face over Elmo or something like that. Just <laughs> stop. <laughs> can I play Gusty Oct Octagon Galaxy in the background? That song's so good. <laughs> that, man, that's some 2008 memes. You know, I've actually heard somebody call Mido's name Mildo. I'm oh, like, how do you God. come out Wait, with Wait, who Mildo? said that? I had somebody that was playing a video a long time ago. Mildo? Was like, That's a How new did you one. come up with an L in his name? <laughs> he just skipped over there. <laughs> yeah, like, that no. was a minor little thing, but that jump slash did against the wall, which just kind of to push Link further in the cutscene. I just like doing it because Link just kind of hesitates when the cutscene starts, and it's like, oh crap, cutscene started. I gotta run way over here. And picks up the pace. <laughs> it's a little speed running trick, but I just like doing it because it's goofy. Giant fish tree. Great Deku tree. So basically to summarize this is, hey, 
You're a hero, and I'm sick. Can you go inside me and kill the thing that's making me sick? Then I can die and never talk to you again? Yeah, cure me from my sickness so I can die. Because that makes sense. <laughs> that's what happens! Hey, I just met you, and this just and this is crazy. But there's a giant spider in me, so kill it, maybe. I mean, let's just wait for a little bit later, come back here with a bottle, and then we can warp the Ganon. <laughs> because you can do it in this version. Yep. <laughs> was it? I, I guess you wasn't doing your randomizer at this point, but I was going to ask, was it hard for you to play this no somewhat normal because you're used to the randomizer now? Well, now if I go back to it, probably, because I'll be doing B1 skip all the time. In a randomizer, I just want to beat the dagger tree right away, so even if I don't have the slingshot, I just jump straight to the boss. <laughs> Deku not. Yeah. Honestly, one of the best items to get, especially at this point in the game. A lot of people, when they first play this game, don't really use Deku Nuts much because they think they're useless. They're a really good item in this game because it stuns basically anything. It actually hurts Hi, the final Navi. boss. Navi, close up, Todd. Yeah, seriously. We can see every pixel on your wing. Oh, fun fact, by the way. Navi's a 2D object in this 3D game. Yeah, wrap your head around that one. Why? I guess in a sense, like, all the angles you see in Navi, it's just two-dimensional sprite. Yeah, because if you go into this game with, like, a, like a fixed camera angle of some kind and move it on your own, you'll see Navi's just a 2D sprite. Oh, wow. Same for bombs, but the explosions are also 2D, which is weird. Bomb shoes are 3D, though. Hi, Deku Scrum. Bye, Deku Scrum. <laughs> Forgive me, Master! I'm your master now? Man, this is a weird way to own a Decker Scrub. <laughs> Wait until the next game and then you become a Decker Scrub. Yeah, it all goes full circle. <laughs> so it just tells you a little helpful hint there. If you fall down a high ledge, as long as it's not too high up, if you just hold up on the stick, you do a roll as soon as you hit the ground. So kind of like that right there, and it saves oh. you from getting hurt. Okay. But it doesn't work for all ledges, because if you're jumping off like a 50-story jump, for example, you're still getting hurt. No matter if you're holding up. Because if that was the case, well, <laughs> this game wouldn't be hard, now would it? Yeah, I mean, you'd never lose health. Although, to be fair, unless you're playing with like low hearts already, health in this game is never really much of an issue. Yeah. Pretty much for any 3D Zelda game, it kind of goes that route. I need to sit down and play Ocarina of Time 3D eventually. Yeah, because you did but play a bit of the I game. Did the you want me to play the original first? Play okay. the original. You'll probably appreciate more of the changes if you play the original first. Okay. Well, I did this. I did the same thing with Majora's Mask. Yeah. Played the original Majora's Mask before I played um, 3D. If you do play on Virtual Console, I'm going to warn you, the dead zone on the stick sucks. And you probably learned that the hard way when you were playing Majora's Mask. Uh, yeah. And because this is a virtual console version, I had to deal with that dead zone issue. Not as bad on the GameCube controller, but it's still kind of loose. But he left the gr green rupee behind. NTS would be mad. Yeah, <laughs> leave it behind. Who needs money? In this game, honestly, is a true sentence. Yeah, it really is. Because you, I'm guessing you get money like at the wall suit in this game. Pretty much, and there's barely anything to buy. There's a point in town where you can just, like, break a bunch of pots and get a bunch of money. Yeah. Heck, actually, as soon as we get the Hyrule Castle, there's a great point to get money there, too, because you can just walk up the top of the bridge and get, like, 60 rupees. High school, Tola. The first of many. There are 100 gold sculptures in the game, and since this is a 100% playthrough, we're getting all of them. Even though You're it really doesn't mean much. Yeah, I am. You, okay. I'm not gonna say it. I'll keep my mouth shut. Yeah, you are another reward too. <laughs> yep. I'll just say it's not worth it. Unless you want to just say you did 100%. Which I did <laughs> my first playthrough of it too, so... My first time playing, I didn't, but like years later, I actually did a glitch on like the GameCube version to duplicate Sculptural tokens, because I didn't know where they all were. I just wanted to see what the reward was. I'm glad I duped. I'll say it, I'll say it that way. It was not worth going on my way to do. You know it's funny that like whenever he hit the switch, Link was like looking down at the switch. Yeah, he, he looks down at that crescent moon because we're playing the original. Your differences. 
Why did they take the crescent moon out? I think because there were some statements coming out. There's never really that much of a confirmation, but I think they were changing a lot of things because of, like religious worries. They were worried people would see like the chanting and like the moon symbol as like a religious thing, like Muslims, and they didn't want people to get upset. So they mainly just changed it just to be safe. Same for the blood. They also changed the blood in this game from red to green. Which honestly I hate. Because every time you kill something with green blood, it looks like they're puking. <laughs> Deku seeds. That's where you slingshot. Yep. We can carry 30 right now. We can carry a max of 50 with upgrades later. So there's three gold Skulltulas in this dungeon? Uh, actually, there's four, but there's one we can't get on our first visit. We need to come back here once we get more items. Yeah. And it actually okay. happens a decent amount in the beginning game. The first two dungeons, you can't fully 100% on Skulltulas until later on, because you don't have all the items you need. <laughs> you were in mid-jump slash when there you got that. Yeah, you can't really reach that unless you do a jump slash, so... Jump away. Now, I didn't mention it up back in the uh, second and third floors, but I did a little trick to skip, like, a little dialogue thing. Like, the first two doors that you enter in this area, Nabby wants to interrupt you and say, Hey, you press the A button and open doors. And it takes, like, a minute for her to actually explain things. If you just... If you jump and then press the button the moment Link's on the ground to open the door, you just skip that entirely. So, for the sake of just getting a move on, I just did that. 231. 23 is number one. Where'd he go? Like he just kind of walks off camera and then poof. Bye bye, Decker Scrub. <laughs> bye bye, American Scrub. I don't know. <laughs> you can press A to hold underwater to dive. Do it here once because you can hit a switch. That's pretty much it for this room. You don't really die for much of anything in this game. There's only a handful of moments you actually need to die for something. Oh, really? Yeah. Swimming wasn't really a big deal in Ocarina. You only did it in very select areas. Well, I mean, like, if you really think about it, like, this game was revolutionary for what it was 3D. So, assuming swimming it takes a lot of out of, like, programming. And yeah, well, it's not stuff. just that, but when you do dive in this game, you move straight down. You can kind of angle yourself underwater when you move the stick, but you barely move in that direction. So basically, you're just diving straight down. That's about it. Yeah, so now I just kind of want to explain, hey, that blue button, pay attention to it because it will change colors. It will change like to different things in general, like climb, grab, attack. Pay attention to what it says, basically what you say. Pay attention to the action button. It does definitely so. change colors. I, I wasn't wrong with that, because on GameCube, they changed the buttons on the top to match the GameCube controller. So the sword was red, and then the A button was green, thanks to it being red and green on GameCube. I always found it interesting that this is one of the Zeldos that throws you right into a dungeon at the start of the game. Yeah, I mean, 10 minutes in, we're already in the first dungeon doing things. Yeah. Like, what other Zelda game did? I mean, closest I can think is Link to the Past. Link to the Past did that too. Link to the Past and, like, the original Zelda is all I can think of off the top of my head. And then maybe Zelda 2, but you kind of have to push your way to the first dungeon for Zelda 2 in, like, the first 10 minutes. And Breath of the Wild, if you choose to go that route. It's I mean, Breath of the Wild, yeah. Breath of the Wild's so open ended. Yeah. yeah. So. Now, time for a clever little party trick Flame Storage. You got flame sword? Yeah, if you like attack like a torch with your sword and then pull out a Deku stick, the stick is lit. <laughs> it's lit, son. <laughs> oh man, not this meme. I hate that word. Two, three. Is one. Now, there's a fun fact about this room I learned recently. You can actually, if you pop out all three scrubs at the same time, which the only way to do it is with a later item in this game, the Megaton Hammer. If you talk to the middle scrub or the scrub on the right, they don't have programmed text, so it's just the introduction text of Navi. They say, hi, I'm Navi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the Great Deku Tree has summoned me. So please, come with me inside the, the Great Deku Tree. <laughs> Deku Scrub's like, I've got... I don't remember who I am. I have amnesia. I'm Navi! Basically. Alright, so time for our first boss. 
for the entire playthrough I'll be doing this, I may as well explain it now. There is a trick in the game called Power Crouch Stab. Basically, whatever attack you did, it's already stored in your Crouch Stab move. So I did a Jump Slash with the stick, because the stick does double damage than the Kokiri Sword. I'll explain that one later. But because of this, you can kill Goma in three slashes. I missed one, but the next hit, Goma's dead. Is that cool? That's weird. It's a weird thing. They actually moved it starting Majora's Mask. And then after Majora's Mask, I just basically moved the crouch stabbing because I realized it was too broken. Wow, you killed Goma. You don't even need the slingshot for this fight. Deku Nuts also stung Goma's eye. So if you wanted to, you could just save your slingshot bullets. Wow. Yeah, and that's the first boss. Now this game is held together by duct tape. Yeah. Piece of heart yep. container. Our first heart container, one of many. We'll be on our way to getting 20 hearts in no time. But for now, it's time to leave this tree. Going straight up through the wood, this is gonna hurt. 